glorifying van life, glorifying the nomadic life? Does YouTube and other social media promote and mislead people that living in your vehicle, being homeless is actually a good thing? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think me or social media in general glorifies unfairly the van life or living in a car, or living in an RV, because I can tell you from my experience that living in my car for two years, it has been a blessing and it has overall been great. And I don't want to back down from that notion. I don't want to submit to some feedback that I've got from some people that they tried living this lifestyle of living in their car van. It didn't work out. And so they feel like they were misled or they feel like, um, you know, they feel like, you know, people led them astray. Uh, but I don't think that's the case because I thank God for the people that inspired me that living in your car was like an option. I didn't know it until like I started to look on YouTube and I was researching downsizing and I was trying to move from New Jersey to Florida and I had to wait until I can get a job transfer and I was trying to get direction in my life. And I knew that downsizing would empower me because it would allow me to control more of my financial resources, but I couldn't figure out a strategy with housing. I really didn't want to rent and I was really not looking to buy again because I just got out of owning a condo for 15 years and, and it was like getting a divorce. I didn't want to buy another property. I didn't want that much commitment. And so when I started to look at downsizing, I saw people living in their RV and then even car or van. And that idea took hold in my mind and I started researching it and I started planning. And then eventually I just said, you know what? I'm young enough. I'm healthy enough. I want to give it a shot. And I did it. I did it with the mindset of is if it doesn't work out, I'm not going to blame social media or anyone for glorifying it because as an adult, I have to take accountability for my life. Because nothing in life, if you buy a house, it may not work out. If you rent a place, it may not work out. Now, if you live in your car or van, it may not work out. Not everything is for everyone. And I try to share with you the sacrifices. Look, you're going to live a primitive life with no heating, no cooling. You can supplement it with going into cafes during the day, uh, with living in, uh, if you can travel, living in certain climates that make it easier, uh, bundling up in the winter. If you live in New Jersey, uh, running an extension cord to your house, uh, to your car. If you live in Florida and you're at a campground during the summer, there's different ways to make it a little bit better, but you're going to be subject to be eaten by bugs more, to uh, just be in the elements more. But even with that sacrifice, even with the constant movement, the constantness of not being settled in your mind, and even if one day I buy a home base, no matter how my future unholds, no matter how my future unfolds, I am going to be forever grateful for the season of my life that this transitional lifestyle, sometimes not always sustainable, but it's definitely a transitional lifestyle. It'll definitely give you another shot again at life. It'll definitely help you if you plan right, if you watch yourself, you could budget and you can get out of debt. You know, who's going who's gonna to pass a law that say, all right, you know, we're going to wipe everyone's debt out. We're going to wipe your college loans out. Who's going to pass a law and say, you know what, we're going to give you a tax credit to move to a state and not just a couple thousand dollars. I mean, who is going to make your life better? Only you. And so this is an opportunity if you keep working or if you have money saved, because you always need income, I've mentioned that, but this is a lifestyle that allows you to live simply, not be on the hook to other people, and that you can really reposition your life. You can take chances again. You, you know, you could start a business. Uh, you can you can get out of your uninspiring career that maybe if you reposition yourself, don't quit your job, but if you reposition yourself, maybe you don't have to work as high stress job as you work. I've done videos about in the gig economy, you could do Uber, DoorDash, you could do other supplemental things. They're not careers, but you could supplement that with other things and you don't need a big career because what you'll find is if you have some big career, sometimes if you have some big job, you're just using it to pay for a big lifestyle, for big housing, for a big mortgage, for a big uh, rent on a landlord. 
Now you need money, you need a career, but what I'm trying to tell you is you also need to be inspired with life. You need to be inspired by where you live. You need to be inspired by that. You are in control of your life to a certain extent. And when you live in your van, car, RV, whatever, you have a little bit more control of your life. You have a lot more movement. That's a negative. You got to keep it moving, but you have more control because you're not on the hook that much financially or any other way. And so, you know, do some people glorify the van life for branding and promotion and for self uh, generating revenue? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But but society does that with housing. Housing housing drives a major part of society because as soon as you buy a house, you're stuck in that location. You know, you have to go to Home Depot. You have to renovate it. You have to buy furniture. Real estate agents get commissions. Uh, municipalities get your property taxes. And society can keep you locked in. Your job says, all right, you're locked in here now. You have to be a good employee. So housing drives the economy. Housing has been more glorified than living in your car. What would happen if everyone lived in their car? The economy would totally change. It would totally change, maybe even collapse. Because without you taking on a 30-year mortgage, without you paying interest, without real estate agents, without construction workers, society will collapse. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a good thing. And I'm not saying the entire society would do good living out of their car. I think if you have kids, I think if you're elderly, I think if you have pets, those are different things that I'm not going to say it makes it impossible to live out of your car, but I want to say that they need to have extra considerations and accommodations. Then you may need to go to an RV. You need to maybe go to some type of vehicle that has more amenities or situation where you can supplement things that, you know, you're not putting yourself or others in harm. But no, I, I, in general speaking terms, I mean, I think there's somewhat of it out there. And I think there's a lot of sacrifice. I try to share with you guys on this channel. I have about 1,500 videos, and I give you the pros and cons. And I state that most people in society, less than 1% of society, live in their car. I state that it's not a sustainable lifestyle for most people. And I even state that I eventually may get a home base. But I also state that this lifestyle... Living in your vehicle has been a blessing to me. It's helped me reposition my life in Florida. It's helped me uh, venture out in new career and new financial goals for my life to live a more inspired life and more empowered. And I'm very thankful for that opportunity. And I do think society glorifies owning a home. It's the American dream. It's the American dream for you to be in debt for 30 years. And for you to pay for renovations and you for pay to maintenance and you to pay to landlords and you to pay to property taxes and you need some of those things. I don't want to say they're all a scam, but I want to say, hey, look, that's more of a scam than living in your car in some instances, in some instances. So I think when you look at it like that, when you evaluate life like that, and here's the final thing, guys, when you take accountability for your decisions as an adult, you may move in your car. A 70-year-old guy inspired me somewhat to move in my car. And some of the big nomads on YouTube, even if they're doing it, you know, as a career to sell this lifestyle, they still help me. Because look, even like even when I was in the church game, even though there were some crooked pastors I was involved, they still helped me spiritually. I took the good from them and I left the bad. Same thing with me. I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't agree with everything I say on my videos, but they can take some insights from my life, some inspiration put their own twist on it and live their own life. And whether they win, lose, or fail, all of us have to take accountability for all our own life. And none of us always win. Sometimes we fail. But life is about you fall, you get back up, and progressively you keep going forward. But this lifestyle allows you to mitigate your uh, financial liabilities and in, in, in your li- your, it allows you to eliminate your liabilities so you can take more risks. And in life, you got to take some risk to push it forward calculated risks and a lot of them fail, but you have to take some. Um, and that's my thoughts on do I, or do the social media glorify van life, which is basically being homeless, living in a car? No, I think society glorifies the American dream, owning a home, being in debt, renovating your ass off for the, your, your entire life and cleaning your house and not being inspired in the state in a house, in a supermarket, in a, in a society that tells you the conforming life is for everything. The the conforming life is not for everyone. And so live life more on your terms. 
And I don't think that's misleading anyone. I think that's a blessing. And I'm very thankful for this lifestyle. Peace and love.